Hey, all right. We are going to look at the anatomy of the uh, axillary lymph nodes. So lymph nodes are really important in anatomy, um, partly because the normal function of the lymphatics is a normal function, and if it breaks down, that's a bad thing. We'll talk a little bit about that towards the end. But up here in the axilla, these lymph nodes are most famous because of their role in the spread of breast cancer. If you've looked at the anatomy of the groups of lymph nodes up in the axilla and you've been confused, Fair enough. The same group, groups of lymph nodes get described two different ways. There are five anatomical groupings and there are three surgical levels. We'll explain all that. I might use some Play-Doh. We'll work it out. Um, I probably need to take my time on this so that it makes sense because it's quite difficult to explain because it's so three-dimensional and no one model shows everything. lymphatic system often feels like one of those kind of imaginary things. Um, the tissues of the body are full of water. We are full of water. So the tissues of the body, the way the tissues work, the way the cells work means they need to be in fluid. Um, so that fluid that collects in the tissues of the body needs to be returned to the cardiovascular system, needs to be returned to the blood. Um, and some of that happens through the lymphatic system. Um, Tissue is collect, uh, fluid in tissues is collected by lymphatic vessels. That fluid is conveyed to lymph nodes. Lymph nodes are sites where we have cells of the immune system monitoring what's, in, what's flowing in the lymphatic vessels. And we tend to find those lymph nodes collected in groups at joints. The axilla, the armpit, is a joint. So we find a collection of lymph nodes here. There are around... 30 lymph nodes in the axilla. And this is also a point where the upper limb meets the thorax. So the lymph nodes here, some of them are collecting fluid, they're collecting lymph from the upper limb. Some of them are collecting fluid from the chest wall, the upper back, the upper chest, and of course, as I mentioned, the breast. The axilla, we've got muscles on this side, we've got muscles on this side. We've got a point up there, we've got a kind of an opening here. So it's almost like a, a pyramid made up of muscles. So it's a three dimensional space, which is why it's gonna be difficult for me to demonstrate to you, I'm gonna use other models, where these lymph nodes are. Um, but the, the lymphatics often follow blood vessels. We often find lymph nodes around blood vessels. So that's gonna be one of our starting points. We'll have a look at the auxiliary artery. Vein, here we go then. There's what's left of the upper limb. Here's the chest wall. So that big muscle there is pectoralis major. Deep to that is a little muscle called pectoralis minor, which will become important later. But if I take off the chest wall, uh, let me take off these bits, we can see some blood vessels. So up here is the axilla. So the blue vessel here we can see is the axillary vein. It's a continuation of the subclavian vein. We change the name. So as the subclavian vein goes past the first rib, we change its name and it becomes the axillary vein. So the axillary vein runs through the axilla and um, becomes the, the brachial vein. In fact, it's kind of worth thinking about it the other way because the blood's flowing in that direction. Um, but this is gonna be a good landmark for us. Now, if we go in the direction of flow from lateral to medial. I said there are around 30 lymph nodes around here, which you can group them all as axillary lymph nodes because they're in the axilla, they're in this region here. And um, the first way of grouping them is the anatomical method. There are five groups. And the first group would be out here, if I can get this Play-Doh to stick. There'd be, you know, five or six lymph nodes in each group. I might not do that many because I'm making exaggeratedly large lymph nodes. This is Play-Doh. This is not anatomically accurate, although actually lymph nodes are quite variable. So, you know, in one scenario it might be. So those lymph nodes you see there are the lateral axillary lymph node group. They're close to the humerus, so they also get called the humeral group. And you can probably see how the lymph nodes in this lateral group are going to be mostly draining lymph from the upper limb. Now, really, this isn't so good because I've taken the chest wall off. I need to have the chest wall on there. But if I put the chest wall back on for this model, pectoralis major will be in the way. So let's move to a different model. Well, that's our first group of five. Here I've got just a head and shoulders, but it lets me show a little bit more. We're going to swap to the other 
the other axilla, except I've only got the top bit of the axilla. You see my difficulty here. I'm going to take off the deltoid muscle. Here's pectoralis major. I'm going to take off pectoralis major. Now we can see pectoralis minor there. The big blood vessel under there, you can see that's the, well, yeah, once it's past the first rib as it has there, that's the axillary vein. So if I was to put my uh, lateral group, my humeral lymph nodes, my lateral axillary lymph nodes, well, I can't really, there's not, there's, you know, there's not really anywhere to put them, so we'll ignore that. We saw them on the previous model. But um, here, you can see that there's a blood vessel running down here, an artery and a vein. Um, so this is the lateral thoracic vein here. Now, the next two groups of axillary lymph nodes, there's an anterior group and there's a posterior group. The pectoralis major muscle is anterior in the axilla, and we're going to find the anterior or pectoral group of axillary lymph nodes here with this vein, with this blood vessel. I'll, I'll put those on. Put some little brown lymph nodes again. Again, there'll be, you know, there'll be more than this, but I can probably manage, you know, squeeze a few in here. So the brown ones are the, whoop, anterior. This group of anterior axillary lymph nodes, this pectoral group, is going to drain the anterior chest wall, the lateral breast, largely, and that sort of thing, right? Okay, back to this guy again for a moment. So that's the um, anterior um, axillary lymph nodes would be anteriorly here. Now remember I said that the, the axilla is like this three-dimensional structure. So can you imagine if we go, if we, if we were to go posteriorly around the rib cage, you've got the scapula here, right? So in there, that's also axilla, right? Um, there's a muscle under here, there's subscapularis, which is running from sub the scapula, deep to the scapula, right to the humerus, one of the rotator cuff muscles. And we've got like um, some muscles here forming the posterior wall of the axilla. So there's a posterior group of axillary lymph nodes back here. Let me make those on yet another model. Here is an upper limb model which means we can see, there's the scapula. We can see what, right? There's that subscapularis muscle. There's teres major. This is the posterior wall of the, um, of the axilla. And back here somewhere, so if you imagine the apex of the axilla is up there, and there are also some blood vessels around here, but there is a group of posterior um, axillary lymph nodes back here also working their way upwards so we've got a posterior group there we've got an anterior group there that's why that three-dimensional shape in the axilla is so important and these also get called the subscapular lymph nodes because they are deep to the scapula and they're with the subscapularis muscle and the subscapular vessels. These subscapular lymph nodes then, this posterior group of axillary lymph nodes, are going to be draining the upper back and the posterior neck, right? So that's three out of the five groups of axillary lymph nodes. Okay, if we're back to this model and you imagine that there is a chest wall and my fingers here, this is pectoralis minor. There is a group of lymph nodes, uh, the central group of axillary lymph nodes, which is deep to pectoralis minor. That's those purple ones there. The anterior group, the posterior group, and the lateral group of lymph nodes will all drain to those central axillary lymph nodes there. And then as we move more medially, so as we get close, this is the first rib here, um, there is a final group of axillary lymph nodes up here, pick a color, green. Again, around the axillary vein, just lateral to the first rib, this final group of axillary lymph nodes, this is the apical group, it's at the apex of that pyramid of the axilla. And the apical axillary lymph nodes are draining the lymph from the central group, so from all the other groups. And these will then drain to the subclavian lymphatic trunk and then depending upon which side we're on, on the left side they'll drain to the thoracic duct, on the right side they'll drain to the right lymphatic trunk uh, and 
um, oh, we can see, there's the inferior, uh, sorry, the internal jugular vein, there's the subclavian vein, where they come together there, that's where the thoracic duct will drain its lymph back into the cardiovascular system from most of the body. And then the, this right upper quarter of the body, up, right upper quarter, quarter-ish, not really, you know, kind of. Um, the lymph from that side will drain through the right lymphatic trunk on the venous angle on that side. So that's where that lymph is going to. We would, if we were looking further, encounter more lymph nodes in the deep neck down here because um, lymph from the, the face and the neck are also draining down here. But that is the organization of uh, the axillary lymph nodes. Five anatomical groups. We have this lateral group here, or humeral, an anterior group uh, on the inferior edge of pectoralis minor, a posterior group back up next to the subscapularis muscle posteriorly, right? And then we have this central group, which all of those are draining to, uh, and then this apical group at the apex, the tip of the axilla, which all those are draining to, and then onwards and back that away. So those are the lymph nodes of interest. What about the three surgical levels then? To describe the axillary lymph node groups in surgical levels, we, here's pectoralis minor here. We talk about levels one, two, and three. See these lymph nodes here? So these are lateral to or inferior to that border of pectoralis minor, that's uh, surgical level one. Uh, these incorporate then the anterior, remember the, the anterior axillary group were uh, on, the an, in, on the inferior border of pectoralis minor. And then you can just about see the purple lymph nodes. Uh, so they're the group of lymph nodes that are posterior to pectoralis minor, that's surgical level two. And then all of these lymph nodes that we see medial to pectoralis minor or superior to pectoralis minor, that's surgical group three. Surgical levels one, two, three. Uh, whereas the five anatomical groups are as we did earlier, right? Same things, just a different way of describing them. Pectoralis minor is key. So as I said at the beginning, the reason this is so important is because of uh, the spread of breast cancer. We've looked at the different groups of lymph nodes in the axilla and we've seen that different groups of lymph nodes take lymph from different parts of the chest or the upper limb, right? Um, so uh, here's a couple more terms for you. Sentinel node. The sentinel node is the first node, the, the first lymph node in a group of lymph nodes that lymph will pass to from a tissue. So fluid is being collected from that tissue, it's passing to a group of lymph nodes, but it's gonna pass to one or maybe two lymph nodes first and then to the others and then to the others, kind of as we've seen, right? So um, you can use ultrasound um, to um, examine lymph nodes in the axilla and see if any are of concern. And then you can do a biopsy of that sentinel lymph node to see, so you can get the pathologist then to have a look at the, the cells there, to see if there are any cancer cells that have spread to that lymph node. When I'm dissecting, it's almost impossible for me to see lymph nodes within the fatty tissue that they reside. They look like that fatty tissue. So how do you identify the sentinel lymph node? There are a couple of methods nowadays. You can inject a blue dye into the tissue that you're interested in and see where that blue dye goes. Of course, you're gonna to have to do this surgically. So you let that blue dye flow from the tissue to the lymph nodes and that blue dye will pass to the sentinel node first and then to the other nodes. So you can identify the sentinel node. The other thing you can do is to put a, um, a mild radioisotope. You can inject that into the, into the tissue and that will then be taken into the lymphatic system and pass into the lymph nodes. You can then use a little handheld probe or a little, little pointy probe thing, also surgically, and uh, use that to identify the radiation it's very mild, right? It's, yeah. Um, so you can identify the lymph node by the radioact radioactive output of that radioisotope as it's traveled to the lymph nodes. So when, when breast cancer is being treated, you would like to identify any nodes that the cancer might have spread to. And if the cancer has spread to axillary lymph nodes, they will need to be removed. Can you see the problem yet? 
Um, the lymphatic system is a part of the normal operations of the body. If the lymph nodes from the axilla are removed, we've seen that some of those lymph nodes are draining lymph from the upper limb. So if you then remove those lymph nodes, the, the lymphatic drainage, the drainage of the tissues of the upper limb is impaired and this will lead to lymphedema. And chronically, long term, that will lead to skin changes and changes to the limb and, and problems. It's not a good thing, right? So ideally, it would be um, useful to be able to identify the lymph nodes in the axilla during uh, an axillary node clearance or an axillary lymph node dissection where a surgeon is removing lymph nodes to reduce the risk of spread of cancer or to remove lymph nodes that have got cancer in them, right? Um, it would be useful to, to identify, be able to identify which lymph nodes are draining the upper limb and which lymph nodes are draining the breast. So you could use either or both of those two methods I described before. You could put a blue dye into one tissue and see which lymph nodes get dyed with that blue dye. And you could put a radioisotope into another tissue and see where that radioisotope goes to identify the lymph nodes that are draining that tissue. And that's a method that's being used, being used nowadays to more accurately remove lymph nodes that need to be removed and leave lymph nodes that will be draining the upper limb and shouldn't be, have been affected to improve patient outcomes. Anyway, interesting stuff, right? It's, a, it's all a little bit cutting edge, that. But the anatomy of the axillary lymph nodes, the groupings, anatomical, the five groups, surgical, the three levels, that's what that all means. The flow is from distal to proximal. Um, remember, the axilla is this three-dimensional structure, so we have those an the anterior group and posterior group and lateral group in the humerus. Those all drain to a central group. The lymph nodes are running with the axillary vein. That central group then drains to the apical group and then back to the venous angle there. That's it. Easy peasy, right? Okay, uh, see you next week.